I'm Ms. Artastic, and today we're going to create an abstract rainbow artwork using paper, markers, and paint. Grab your mark-making mediums and let's make some art. Don't forget to keep your eyes open for Van Gogh's Starry Night as it's hidden somewhere in this video. We're going to begin this artwork by first find some colors, uh, colored paper that is sort of like a rainbowy themed color. So you can pick whatever you want. For mine, I just picked four of my rainbow colors. The rainbow colors are red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, and violet. And I've picked red, yellow, green, and blue of those colors. And then I've cut out some organic shapes, shapes that are not man-made or geometric in nature. So these are all just organic shapes. And I'm going to glue them down onto my background, um, which is just a piece of white paper, okay? Then we're, go we're going to go ahead and create our rainbows separately before we add these on top and add some other details. So let's go ahead and glue on our little pieces here. And you can glue them any which way. You can cut them out however you feel and glue them wherever you want. So even though I'm doing this, your artwork, there's no way it's going to look anything like mine. And that is a good thing. How boring would our world be if all art was the same? So we do want our abstract rainbow art pieces to look different from each other's. And there's different ways you can do this too. You can pick rainbow colors, but you could also do this with values. So if you don't want to do this as a rainbow, you can do organic shape cutouts and rainbows that are of a value of one color. And that would be pretty interesting too. So there's lots of different ways you can do this artwork. There's no one right or wrong way to do it. Okay, so I'm making sure that I place and that I firmly smooth it out so that way the glue adheres properly to my paper. And of course you can let shapes overlap Overlapping really helps create some visual interest in your artwork. I think I'm just gonna add one more little piece. Once it's glued down, we're going to use a black felt marker and we're gonna add some different line patterns on our background. So first we can add some dashed lines around our artwork and you can just go down vertically and in different groupings, however you want or wherever you want. So I'm just quickly adding some dashed lines for some texture in multiple places. So now I'm gonna do a horizontal section. You can also just add normal lines
You can add arrays or groupings of ovals. And maybe even some squares. Once you're done doing that, you can take a white pencil crayon or oil pastel, and you can add some texture on your colored shapes. Just by, again, adding lines or zigzags or swirls. Explore a variety of lines in this artwork. And of course, line is an element of art. Line can be used to add pattern, can be used to create shapes and add repetition and rhythm in your artwork. And once you're satisfied with the amount of texture that has been added to create the background, you are ready to start on your rainbows. So we're gonna just take this guy and set it aside and get some watercolor or cardstock paper, something that's thick. Now we'll use this side. And now we're ready to start painting the rainbows. Now we're gonna do some very deep U shapes. We'll start off with the red. So remember Roy G. Biv, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, and violet. And of course, we're starting off at red. And we're going to just draw five to seven rainbows around our paper or paint them, sorry. So you can use whatever paint you have. I'm gonna use watercolor paint. And mine are gonna be watercolor rainbows but you can use whatever paint you want. Okay, so this is not a stretched rainbow, it is a very steep rainbow. I'm gonna make rainbows of different sizes around my artwork. So I'm gonna make the red arches first, but so that way I don't have to change my paint color a whole bunch of times and rinse my brush. I'll just do it in between them. And we'll do one more little rainbow. Awesome, red, orange. leave a little bit of a gap between your colors so they don't blend. Water has a tendency to want to equalize, so we just want to leave a little white gap, if we can, between the colors. Now some of my rainbows are not going to be complete, so I'm not going to have all the colors. I want to have a bit of a space in between, so they're just going to be very minimalistic rainbows, simplified rainbows. And of course, this is abstract, so it makes sense for the artwork. So I'm rinsing my brush when I switch colors. And if you have lots of paper and one of your rainbows goes away, you can always start again if you have lots of extra paper there. No big deal, sometimes things just don't work out the way we want them to. 
I think I'm gonna just do green and blue before I'm done. I might even actually end with green. It kind of looks nice like that. I think I will. You never know where your art takes you sometimes. All right, I'm gonna leave it like that. That looks quite lovely indeed. Okay, so that's my simplified rainbows. Mine are not quite dry, so if this is your artwork, make sure you let it dry fully first, and then you can try again. All right, once you're done painting them, just let it dry, and then we'll cut it out and glue them to our backgrounds. Okay, so once these rainbows are dry, we're gonna cut them out, but as you cut, please leave a nice white border around it, okay? We don't wanna cut it right along the red. We would love to keep some of that paper. Now the great thing is that you're gonna have a lot of little watercolor paper bits left and it's good to keep these for collages later because it's a great medium. It's such a waste just to recycle it. So please keep them the best you can. Again, I'm going to keep all my scraps for collages or other art projects later, so I'm just going to set them aside to reuse them. And now I'm ready to try and arrange this. So I want you to play first with how you want to place your heart, your rainbows. So we don't, we want this to be abstract, so we're going to place them at different angles. So they're not necessarily going to be up and down. Okay, so I think I'm gonna do mine like this and you can see how cute that is going to look. Ooh, I am so excited. All right, get my little glue stick out here. And once you're done gluing all of those rainbows, your abstract rainbow art piece that has a lot of different lines for the element of art line is now done. Hey there, I'm Kathleen McGivern, and I'm a professional artist, teacher, and the creator of Ms. Artastic. As an artist, I create lowbrow artworks and have shown my work in both commercial and public galleries. I'm also Ms. Artastic, and I create art teaching resources 
and art lessons for Artcastic Nation. If you're an art teacher, educator, or art studio instructor, then this is for you. The Artastic Collective is a community where you can access a library of art resources and lessons created by me, Kathleen McGivern, or by the name you most likely know me as, Ms. Artastic. With your membership, you can access an art resource library with new resources being added to the community both weekly and monthly. This art resource library is made up of resources from my TPT store and resources that I create exclusively for the Artastic Collective. This will take care of your lesson planning, allowing you to have clarity for what to teach, the convenience of clicking, printing, and teaching immediately, direction for where to go with your year-long plan, and speedy lesson planning, which will allow you to have your freedom back. As well, you will get to engage with a community of other art teachers and instructors in the Members Only Forum. In addition to this, you can get help from me and the other art teachers in the forum at any time or bounce ideas around and collaborate with other members. As well, you can join me for monthly question and answer live video conferences. I'll also host virtual meetups and provide you with monthly challenges to help you on your journey of success. Can't wait to see you there.